Hello, I'm your host, David Lilly. Due to our animation budget, I am currently embodied as this blue dot. In reality, I am a vivid red. Pleased to make your acquaintance. If you're here to learn how to take this and turn it into this, you've come to the wrong video. You'll be needing some Bob Ross. But you will learn how to take this and turn it into this using Photoshop. I use Photoshop 7.0, cutting edge, so keep in mind that other programs might have variations from what I'm showing you here. Now it's time to get started. You've got a nice cartoon line drawing, and you want to make it look great with color. For the true beginner, you'd be tempted to do the most common sense thing, which would be to start coloring your image coloring book style. See, that's the paintbrush, and then you pick the color down there, which is always fun. Here we go, color away! Uh-oh! When Photoshop flashes the disgruntled Cleese icon, it means you've made a mistake. But what did we do wrong? Well, you colored over the top of your original lines. You could try to color around those lines or use the paint bucket tool, but it would be a huge pain in the... Plus, you'll have nasty white pixels showing up. Your drawing will look messy. No wonder we triggered a disgruntled Cleese. Luckily in Photoshop, you can undo your error. Go up to Edit, Undo, and presto, your mistake is fixed. But how do we color our picture without ruining the original lines? That's where the magic of layers comes in. Just put your colors on a different layer. Select Layer, New, and name your layer so you don't get confused later when we have a ton of them. Put the Lines layer on top and the Character Color layer below. But you'll notice another new problem. Try to color on your Colors layer and you see nothing because our black and white drawing is covering up all of the layers below it. To fix this phenomenon, we have to change the blending mode. I like to use Multiply, but there are a lot of options. Some are really wacky, try them out. Now we can see the colors on the layer below, perfect. Next, you actually need to sit down and color in the flat, normal colors of the character. We have to lay down the base before we can get fancy with shading and lighting effects. Wow, this goes way faster when I'm doing a tutorial. Usually that takes a long time. Next step, this is where it starts to get fun. We have our lines, we have our colors, but we're not done yet. These colors look, uh, lame. Kind of flat and boring. They're not wrong, but they're not very cool either. How do we make the colors look cool? We could just start throwing some gradients on there, I suppose, and start making our paintbrush fuzzy and try some other colors, or... Oh, ew, that, that doesn't look too... Oh, oh, there we go, a disgruntled Cleese. This isn't the way to go. And plus... Now we've messed up our nice, clean character colors. If we want to change our mind and start from scratch, we may not have enough undos to restore our work. That's no good. So, when you have a clean, neat color layer, you don't want to mess it up and paint directly on it. But what should we do? How do we go from flat to fun? First, you need something to guide your efforts. You can't just randomly airbrush stuff on your image, or it will look bad. The key is you're not painting colors anymore. That step is done. Now you're controlling the lighting, just like they do on a film set or on a computer animated feature. You have to imagine, which direction is the light coming from? What color is it? How bright? Lighting is a whole lesson in and of itself. You'll need to learn at least a little about it to make these next steps work. Here's how I like to set up my lighting. I use adjustment layers. With my character layers selected, I go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layers. There's a lot of different ones. Try some out and see what you think. My favorite is usually hue saturation. Be sure to select group with previous or the adjustment layer will affect more than just our character color layer. Now this menu pops up. This is the control board for our adjustment layer. Let's make some shadows. Colored shadows. Click the colorize box to get started. Then choose a color. How about bluish purple? Make it darker. Mess with the settings. When you're done, you can even adjust the opacity or transparency of the entire adjustment layer itself. There are a lot of options to play with. So now we have our colors, but darker. How does that help us? It's not supposed to be darker everywhere, just where we wanted the shadows. Well, that's where the built-in layer mask becomes the key. What's a layer mask, you ask? It's basically just another way to control the opacity or transparency of a layer. When the layer mask is all white, the layer is not transparent at all. We can see everything like normal. When you fill in the layer mask with black, the layer is completely clear. We see right through it like it's not even there. But what if we filled it in with gray? It's about half clear. 
But here comes the real fun. What if instead of changing the color fill on the whole layer, we use the paintbrush tool and just paint a line across it? Aha! So with the layer mask, we can control which part of the adjustment layer shows and which part is hidden, and decide where we want to paint the shadows on without affecting our original color layer. Take some time playing with layer masks. It's a weird concept at first, but once you get used to it, you'll use it all the time. So here's the part that takes some practice, painting on the shadows. You can use shadows to show the shape of your character and the way light hits it, where the light is coming from, and all sorts of fun stuff. After you've got your shadows painted on, things are starting to look pretty good. But we can do more. What if we wanted to add a new light source, or maybe some nice rim lighting? Let's make another adjustment layer, hue saturation again, but this one will make brighter instead of darker. Now it's the same routine as before, but with a new adjustment layer and a new layer mask. Paint in the effect to your preference. We can keep on adding adjustment layers all day. You're starting to get the idea by now. Here's another one. For a finishing touch, let's add an overlay layer to the colors to give them a vague sort of tint that ties things together. Create a new layer above the colors and change the blending mode to overlay. Then with a big fuzzy brush at a low opacity, paint in some colors and see what happens. This can help pop highlights, tweak chroma, and just generally jazz things up a bit. Next, we may want to add a background. To do that, hold your nose and blink three times. And there, it pops right in. Secret of the pros. And for those who would like just a hint of class, check out the filters and throw in a lens flare. Well, uh, well, maybe not. This tutorial shows you the basic way I usually shade my images. Hopefully it was helpful to any new digital artists out there. There are dozens of other techniques that can be used as well, all with their own different visual effect. So check out some other artists, experiment, have fun, and good luck with the coloring. All that